सहनावत सहनाव भुनक्त सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनावदी तमस्तुमाशावह ओं शांति Yogas. We move on to chapter twelve now. Chapter eleven: States of consciousness to the path of reality is over. Now we move on to chapter twelve: the four, the four yogas. The four yogas are bhakti yoga, jnana yoga, karma yoga, and hatha yoga. a very important chapter where all the paths are described elaborated in in detail all the four paths are elaborated in in detail that's why uh, i really didn't, didn't go into the details in the previous thing the path of reality because here he is taking up one by one by one and he is going to analyze it in in detail so four yogas what are the four yogas bhakti yoga jnana yoga karma yoga and hatha yoga hatha yoga is the path of compulsion force the path of compulsion force is called hatha yoga karma yoga is the path of action bhakti yoga the path of devotion jnana yoga the path of knowledge these are the four yogas the four yogas attending to the different aspects of the personality bhakti yoga is in relation to the mind the karma yoga is in relation to the action hatha yoga is in relation to the indolent the bhakti yoga is uh, sorry the jnana yoga is in relation to the intellect four yogas because the human being have these four classifications the four yogas because human beings have these four classifications what are the four classifications in a human being indolent active emotional intellectual a human being have these four aspects indolent active emotional and intellectual one second is all human beings are a combination of all these four a human being is a combination of all these four the proportion varies the proportion will vary but all human being has the combination of these these four since a human being is a combination of these four he needs to he needs to practice all these all these four according to his proportion by practicing the four yogas according to one's proportion you become a a vairagi sanyasi renunciate that is the next uh, that's the next lesson renunciation we are not discussing renunciation now we are only saying how the four yogas the consequences the four yogas is the cause renunciation is the effect renunciation is the cause meditation is the effect there it stops from meditation to self realization there is no cause and effect you can't say meditation is the cause self realization is the effect in at the last point you cannot bring in that cause and effect when we go to the lesson meditation we will see that point also in detail 
you will see how how it is not a cause and effect relationship so what are the four yogas the karma bhakti jnana and hatha we have seen this any number of times yoga means union we have seen this definition any number of times the sanskrit word yoga comes from the root word huge to join to connect anything that connects is called yoga so connecting through action literally it means connecting through action connecting through emotion connecting through intellect connecting through hatha that's what path means so the connection in english language is translated as as path you need to connect back you need to return back you need to get back whenever we say you need to uh, let us connect if you say let us people also use the word no let us connect let us connect means what now there is a now there is a disconnect there is a separation so only when there is a separation connection becomes necessary so yoga is nothing but an implication that there is a separation and you need to unite the back and you need to connect the back what are you separated from what is it that a human being is separated from the human being is separated from godhead you are separated from your godhead it's not a separation that has happened it's a separation that seems to have happened it's not a separation that has actually happened it's a separation that seems to have happened and we are working backwards now what is it from the from the from the standpoint of you the individual now there is a huge gap between you and godhead there is a huge separation between you and the self there is this huge separation how does one bridge the gap that bridging the gap is called yoga connecting is called yoga so first thing it is implied is there is a there is a gap and the second thing is there is the connection by getting involved in the action you have forgotten your godhead so you have to use action to remember karma yoga by entertaining various feelings you have forgotten your connection with the divine so you need to work through the emotions by thinking of all the various kinds of worldly thoughts and involvement in the world you have forgotten the divine so through what by what all means you have forgotten that divine you need to use that to get back that is the yoga you do action you get involved in the action you have emotion you are carried away by the by the emotion intellect thinking when you stir the you get so carried away by the by the ideas of by the ideas pertaining to the to the world in and through all this how do you remember the divine is the is the yogas and the last one is hatha yoga we will see that also the fourth one is hatha hatha means compulsion very important is to understand the four categories the four categories are emotional 
intellectual, active, indolent. The four categories are emotional, intellectual, active, and indolent. And who is emotional? The word emotional knowledge is very clear. What is it? Everything in life is seen through, is viewed through emotions. That is emotional. Are you able to follow? Second is intellectual. Whose intellect head predominates over the, the heart. That is an intellectual. The third is active. Active means both are not that strong enough. It's balanced. Balanced doesn't mean better because today if we say balanced means we will say better. Here, here we say balanced because neither, neither one is predominant. Neither one is strong enough. It's balanced. That person tends to become that person tends to become active. The fourth category is indolent. Who is indolent? A person who neither has the motivation for action, who neither has feelings, who neither has any thinking. And that person also has to be helped. What is the yoga for that person? Hatha yoga. So all the all the practices, all these. Uh, when we go there, we'll see those practices. What are the hatha yoga? What are the hatha yoga? What are the hatha yoga practices? Carry a heavy load and walk. Yeah, Kavadi. Carry a heavy load and and walk, poke yourself with, poke yourself with, with nails and, uh, and, and whatever be it, sleeping on the bed of nails, walking with footwear made of, made of, made of thorns. When everybody will walk in the shade, that person, Hatha Yoga fellow, has to walk in the sun. When everybody takes shelter, when it rains, this fellow has to stand under the, the pouring rain. The idea is, at some point of time, he will wake up and ask, why are you asking me to do all this? Why are you inflicting? Why are you inflicting pain? Hatha Yoga. So the moment, uh, why are you inflicting pain comes about, he has evolved from the indolent state. And what is an active stage? A mixed temperament. A mixed temperament. Instead of saying balanced temperament, you can use the word mixed temperament. Emotions are not that developed. Intellect is not that developed either. That person is called an active person. And the vast majority of human beings belong to the active category. But you talk to people, they say emotional. You talk to human being and ask everybody, where do you think you belong to? Everybody will say, I belong to emotional category. Just to, yeah, deep inside you, you will be thinking you are an intellectual, not even yeah, emotional. Just for the sake of, uh, just for the sake of, uh, you know, not to show, you say, I belong to emotional category. Yeah. Predominantly, even here, including this classroom, people belong to the active, active category. 
predominantly. Then comes the emotional category. What is an emotional category? Emotional category means so overwhelmed by emotions all the time that they need uh, somebody to keep pouring the emotion. That is emotional. They are so overwhelmed, they need uh, somebody or something to pour their emotions all the time. Such a person is called emotional person. So Bhakti Yoga is the path designed for an emotional person. Minority, intellectual category is always a, intellectual category is always a, a minority. Please understand, we are not saying they are superior. They are in minority. That's all. There is a difference. We are not saying they are superior people. They are in minority. And what is the intellectual person? Rationality is given more predominance, is intellectual. Feelings is given predominance, is emotional. That's the difference. Are you able to follow? Thinking and all is fine, sir, but at the end of the day, as human beings, feelings are important, no, sir. It's feelings, no. It is love, no. It is affection, no. Feelings, sir. Feelings, feel, feel. You understand that person is? You understand that person is emotional. Not in the negative sense. Outpouring of emotions. Same thing. Who is an active person? A person who has this mixed temperament. What does mixed temperament mean? Neither mind is strong enough, like an emotional, neither is neither predominantly rational, neither he is predominantly emotional. He needs, he needs action. What is action means? He needs to do something that person has to do something, see the result of it, and then there is a satisfaction. A restless person who cannot be without action. A restless person. Wake up in the morning and you don't have anything to do, now you get so yeah. Give me work, give me work, give me work. I want, I want work, I want work, I want work. Give me work, give me work. Remember that story, you know, give me work, give me work, give me work. What work? Climb the ladder up and down. For eternity, you can keep climbing. You remember the story, no? you know the story, no? the genie. He said, if you don't give me work, I will, I will kill you. So the, so the boy said, okay, keep climbing the ladder up and, up and down. Because he said, give me wealth, he gave wealth. Give me this, he gave this. Now, what else to, now what else to ask? And the genie says, if you don't give me work, you are, you are killed. And then what did the, the, and what did the boy do? Keep climbing the ladder up and up and down. Keep climbing the ladder up and down means what? Hmm? But nothing is. You feel like as though you are doing, uh, you, you will feel like actually as though you are doing something, but in the end, nothing. But in the end, nothing would have happened. So this is the, the, the active category. 
the four yogas talk about the four category of of people see all this is elaborated in detail when we read the paragraphs when you go into the text all this is elaborated in in detail i am giving you the brief this thing about the the text about the chapter and and then in the next class we'll go we'll go step by step and what is karma yoga and then he goes on to the description of bhakti yoga and then when he discusses bhakti yoga he says what is not bhakti first and then he will discuss what bhakti is first he will remove the misunderstanding behind the bhakti what bhakti is not will be discussed first and then he will discuss what bhakti is what bhakti is not what bhakti is and then who is a bhakta the practitioner of bhakti yoga 35 qualities 35 qualities of the devotee so with that bhakti yoga is covered and then he covers jnana yoga what is jnana yoga jnana yoga is a enquiry vichara jnana yoga is enquiry vichara so again the same formula what is not jnana yoga and what is jnana yoga erudition and scholarship is not jnana yoga you have studied a lot of shastras and scriptures and by hearted and lectures doesn't mean you have you are a jnani so what is not jnana yoga is discussed and then what is what is jnana yoga will be discussed and then same formula who is a who is a jnani practitioner of jnana yoga 20 qualities then then there you have a right understanding of what is bhakti yoga what is jnana yoga then the third that will be discussed is karma yoga what is karma yoga karma means action so in action what are the wrong motivations behind action and what should be the right thing that drives action what shouldn't drive action and what should drive action just as what is not bhakti what is not gyanam and what is bhakti and what is gyanam even in karma yoga action so in action whenever we talk about action we have to talk about that which drives the action so what is it that should not be driving the action and what is it that should drive the action karma yoga and then a brief discussion about hatha yoga a brief discussion about hatha yoga because um, predominantly human beings are not now predominantly karma bhakti gyan itself is enough hatha yoga category under again is very very rare predominantly people don't belong to the category of hatha yoga but then there are there are that category also and hatha yoga is discussed for them so he discusses hatha yoga hatha yoga 2 so bhakti yoga is discussed what is bhakti what is not bhakti who is a bhakta that's all the topic that's all the analytical methods what is jnana yoga what is not jnana yoga what is jnana yoga and then who is a jnani jnani means practitioner of jnana yoga then comes karma yogi karma yoga and karma yogi now what is karma yoga what what are the wrong things that drives action what what if it drives the action it can be called as karma yoga and who is karma yogi and then hatha yoga and all these four in the last topic there is the beautiful road map the last beautiful road map the karma the bhakti the gyan yogas the three the the three roads 
converging in uparati dharana dhyana and samadhi these are the this is the topic so sorry this is the chapter the four yogas prasad in general the sequence is karma bhakti and gyana yoga but in book other describes in reverse sequence any particular reason for this now in the general course of conversation we keep saying it as karma bhakti gyana karma bhakti gyana karma bhakti gyana now when we say 1 2 3 there are two ways of looking at it when we say 1 2 3 there is a hierarchy ascending order or descending order correct so whenever we say 1 2 3 it can either mean ascending order or descending or descending order where one may be the highest or three may be the highest but then definitely there is ascending order descending order 1 2 3 means ascending order descending order distinct and different from the ascending order and descending order is linear which which one the distinct and different from ascending order is the linear linear okay linear straight meaning all three are at the same level same level but when we are communicating when we are writing we have to write it as a b c are able to follow so in karma yoga bhakti yoga gnana yoga karma yoga bhakti yoga gnana yoga should not be understood as the ascending order or descending order okay it should be understood as equals equals it should be understood as equal but in the course of conversation what do we do we start from the action always why we start from the action always is because predominantly people are active and any discussion about action attracts their uh, attracts their attention okay sir if we start from uh, nitya anitya viveka vicharam yeah nobody will come not that they want people to come yeah all pudikrangale not that they want people to not that they want people to come you wouldn't be benefited at all so what they do they 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 speak about action a lot that sequence is the bhagavad gita sequence where action will be discussed in detail a lot the sequence of bhagavad gita why because of the student there you go to the sequence of the upanishad karma will be not at all ah karma is ridiculed no discussion about karma will happen if at all there will be if at all there is a discussion on karma na that karma will be ridiculed there so there the there the sequence gets completely reversed so then the question is what is the correct sequence there is no correct sequence there is no ascending order descending order sequence it is linear it is oh. linear it is linear and it always depends on the practitioner proportion and his practice yes the practitioner the individual practitioner's proportion so but then uh, i'm uh, i'm repeating myself again in in clearer thinking we need to have this distinction very clear when we say 1 2 3 the in the school uh, uh, my name starts with a clear the first thing is a so i'll be the first i could never copy at all in my exams because first table sourdar ko munadi yeah you 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 have to see the you have to see the wall only even if you want to ask something you have to have to turn and ask clear vijayarangana ku and the problem e kedaadu because 
everybody is in the front yeah vijay will not have that problem that's why i told uh, i told my father you know when my daughter you know enna per vekla i said not something starting with a i said something illa why it was easy to easy to pass exam at least illa copy edigiradha now there for a, for there all are linear but the hierarchy but then it is given in a it will be spoken of in a sequence but the sequence there doesn't mean anything okay yes. are you following though okay. though though it is a sequence that sequence really doesn't mean the sequence really doesn't mean uh, doesn't mean anything similarly Hello. the sequence karma bhakti gyana yoga we speak throughout the all in and through all the sessions we talk as karma bhakti gyana yoga only why we talk as karma bhakti gyana yoga is because the predominance predominance because of the predominance of action and the and uh, and um, next higher is emotion the 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 vichara type is very very less we all have that vichara we all have that enquiry but that enquiry proportion is very limited less very less we can't say we don't have enquiry but the enquiry portion is very less therefore what do we talk so 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 we so we discuss that angle of karma bhakti and yeah yeah is it okay prasad yes sir thank you so in thinking it's not ascending order or descending order but then for uh, for, uh, for for the otherwise we really don't know how to when you are talking you have to say it as a b c only or 1 2 1 2 1 is it okay yes sir and touch on you mentioned separation human being and god can is it the same as jiva and brahman correct it's the same okay it's the same thing the jiva is separated but then we don't say it as actual separation a separation yes. that seems to have happened, happened. appears yeah a separation that seems to have happened correct it is the same thing is it okay sir even even the dirt that has that appear that's only an appearance yes yes the dirt that is an uh, appearance is, and which is nothing but ignorance yes caused by maya yes correct that ignorance itself is an appearance the very fact that it can be removed means it is an appearance yes ma'am if it has an inherent reality of its own you can never remove it it will keep remove. coming back again and again and again how can we remove it if it has an inherent reality of its own but the fact is it can be removed the fact that it can be removed means it is it is an appearance but not but not real so ignorance itself is an appearance and uh, and in the same token the identification of atman with uh, with, the, with the body mind complex is also an appearance yes. because of maya yes yes it is an appearance exactly mm-hmm. correct this appearance is discussed in different contexts in different ways yes in one context the body mind intellect complex and livend yes. in another context it is the jiva mm-hmm. so but then what is discussed always is in different context the appearances are described differently but finally the same thing yes it is an appearance that is where i said distinct and different from karma and bhakti is jnana yoga where it says it is an it is an appearance so that is where uh, Uh, jnana yoga becomes uh, a distinct and different from uh, karma yoga karma and, and bhakti is it okay sir yeah uh, just just one observation yeah hatha yoga is yes. not considered in the same league yes. as uh, karma bhakti Correct. and jnana yoga yes. so today 
yes. the practice that is followed is yes. mostly through yoga which Correct. is restricted yes. itself to only Correct. hatha yoga Correct. We just really an observation. Yeah, yeah. We really don't give that much. Uh, uh, it is needed, but it it will not be dealt with in such a detailed thing because naturally, very few belong to that. That category. Very few belong indolence. to that indolent category. Yes. Predominantly, people are active category. Active. If you take the human being promotion uh, proportion, active will be more. More. Slightly lesser than that is emotional. Emotion. Then comes the rational. Very few. Yes. Similarly, the indolent also will be. Indolent yes. also is very few only. Yes. That way you find predominantly people are active. Now what has happened is. Look, it looks like the proportion is moving towards indolent, but which is not. It is very. It, it is a wrong thing to say predominantly people are indolent. People are not predominant. The vast population cannot become yes. indolent. It is against nature. It is against the law of nature. Only a few remains indolent and that few is also addressed to. That is why in the traditional way of discussion, we never discuss about Hatha Yoga a lot. We always talk about Karma Bhakti Jnana, Karma Bhakti Jnana and Karma Bhakti and, and Jnana. This, but, but in today's yeah. context, people yeah. take up to Hatha Yoga yes. more for shaping the body Correct. and physical it's not health. Yoga at all. Then, uh, it's not a yoga. It's yeah, not a yeah. purpose. It's not yoga. Yes. yes, it's not a yoga because the union is not the goal there. Yeah. The union is not the goal. The goal there is, that is why even, even in meditation class also, we don't talk about it as meditation at all because the purpose is not uniting with the self. The purpose is to calm the mind. The purpose is managing the mind, calming the mind. So predominantly it is used for managing the mind and calming the mind. Yeah. So it doesn't fit into the category of yoga itself in the first place. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. With this, we conclude for today. From next week, we start with chapter. I started today, we continue with the chapter, the four yogas.